Well, how do you feel now, pal? Because we didn't win. I didn't lose a fucking bet this week, you fucking bum. Let me see your tickets. At least I put myself out there and fucking in the public eye and I have no scare or shame and I'm still profitable because when I give you these picks it's on Tuesday you fucking butts bang bang chitty chitty bang bang we got the 100x club is back with Marco Hollywood Pamani and I got Tony Sharp next to me we're a couple of winners doing a show here we are give them the intro I'll tell you with an intro like that it's safe to say you probably won a million and a half this past weekend. I won. Let's get into the show today. Um, you know, today I want to welcome you guys, but I want to let you know that we want to hear your comments. We're going to be bringing some comments into the show. Yeah. We're going to have a separate little uh, little session today that yeah. I can't wait to get into. I cannot wait to do that. Uh, but also drop some things in you may want to hear, some things you maybe don't know. Uh, my favorite color is purple. Uh, I was about to tell you guys my penis size, but I didn't feel Feel like it um overall do whatever you want say whatever you want drop those comments in if you want to be a dick face go ahead you're gonna get fucking exposed yeah, on here so i got some comments to talk about later on the show oh lord but we'll save it <laughs> world cup update united states wins the fucking game if you didn't bet team usa fuck you period how do you feel about that? I agree. He was Mr. I England, agree. though. So I, I was know. England in the first game. You asked me who I thought would win. There was a draw. I thought the USA played good, which we were both wrong, was actually. no surprise for me that yeah. they were going to come out against the Iranians. Yeah. So uh, here's a little World Cup uh, fun news. So I've got a follower of mine. He's got a $27 bet to win 527000 His update, that he asked uh, FanDuel for an update, updated cash out. And they didn't give him one. Shame on FanDuel. Really? That, that's shitty. Like, I'm sorry. Like, give him an updated cash out. They moved on to the next stage. He should have an idea of what the updated cash out is. They didn't provide one. So did they say when they would give the cash out? Not yet. I'm going to help him. Um, I don't know who I have to reach out to, but I know we've got some contacts over there. So I'm going to help him figure that out. Um, but he's really excited. He's a really genuine Cool dude. Um, I'm. I'm. Like I said, I have no action on this other than the USA game today that I bet. I have no action on the World Cup, so I'm really rooting for France to win it all. If it's not the United States, it's got to be France. I am so, too, for the sole purpose. Yeah. And by the way, um, you know, I'm not. As we've mentioned before, I'm not that big of a soccer guy. I come around for the World Cup. Yeah. I know, you know, get upset about it, but. Bottom line is, best player in the world is on France right now. And I think, and I, Mbappe, yeah. yeah, I mean, the guy's a monster. And I think they have what it takes to truly win. So I, I feel like rooting him on. Hey, and I just want to let the whole world know if the United States cared about soccer, like we care about all the other sports here, there would be no contest. It's simple. We're the best athletes in the world live in the United States. Period. If you don't think that's true, I know I've got a lot of foreign followers, but I'm sorry. If you think that some guy like named like Tyree Kill wouldn't go overseas and fucking run all over you, you're you're crazy. We have the best, most explosive, fast, best cutting athletes. Like, can you imagine if LeBron James, when he was 20, said, you know what, I'm gonna go be the best soccer player in the world? Yeah, that's the thing. Here in America, I mean, soccer practices are like 1030 at night when nobody else is, you know, it's that's like the, a, it's like the last resort to sports. Yeah. So I couldn't agree more. But I do acknowledge it's the biggest sport in the world. Just understand if the United States cared, we would be number one. We're going to move let's on. From pivot, the let's pivot to American football. Yeah. F-O-O-T-B-A-L-L. -L. Let's do it. Uh, let's talk about how we were very dependent. Uh, not we, but you, my friend. Okay. Raiders and Jags uh, coming through in dramatic fashion this week the Raiders as we know do have potential uh by what's on roster however they're just not playing up to it yeah somebody said Marco you bet the Raiders every week I'm like if you understood how to look at game plans and look at rosters you'd understand that the Raiders are unfucking believable on paper like they from good from defense paper. to offense to running back to quarterback to receivers um I would like to say this now and it's it's not that bold of a statement but Devontae Adams is the best receiver in the NFL. There's no comparison. What Listen, what he's able to do... Week in and week out. Week in and week out on a consistent basis. He's definitely up there in the top three. Last year, could have made a case that he was the best receiver For in the sure. league. For sure. And this year, year, I would have to probably take the Jeff. Okay. But... I, I get it. And I respect that. But the way this guy makes these catches, um, it, it just he's so physical and, and, and he uses finesse at the same time. Very smooth. I, I love him. I really do. So I won $1.5 million this week. I got a lot of shit talkers talking shit saying I got lucky. Listen, if you don't know sports, that's on you. I've watched a lot of football. And when you're down by one score, it's not that lucky. Okay? <laughs> All right. 
Like, you fucking mopes. All right, week, tell, week 12 recap. Let's talk about a, a Thanksgiving Day game that I said Detroit plus 10 was an absolute stone-cold lock. I posted it early. I posted it often. And then people were like, damn, I wish I saw this. So, or, or they said before the game, <laughs> are you fucking crazy? You're taking the bills. You don't know how to bet. You're ice cold. You're a pussy. You're, you don't know how to do this. You're you don't a know how bum. to do that. You and lost that- all your money. <laughs> I said, uh, that's funny because it looked like not only did the, the Lions actually cover, they should have won the game. Dude, they play tough ball on Thanksgiving. I don't know what people are going to realize. They play when you tough. take a team that constantly plays at the same time every 11, year 11 a.m central every year detroit usually at home it's a tough fucking team it, the, and you know what it's I, a tough team I on promise that day you, and they prove to be well the refs did not help them at all in that game and i'm not asking for ref help but what i'm saying is the game was pretty they had a lot of holding calls that they did not call on buffalo um i don't know i i, li- I still think i had the i had the lions money line and i had the lions plus 10 did i have more on the plus 10 yes but i'm a little salty about the ml play that i lost so i still came out ahead but whatever uh brady and bucks late loss i'm not surprised they should have lost the game like that they should have been blown out frankly um what do you think you want to know what i think yeah i took a an, uh, i took a live nickel immediately going in ot on the bucks lost that like you wouldn't believe sorry uh agony and defeat he went against me i live wagered in the end of the fourth the cleveland browns plus 450 it updated it was plus 600 i put a hammer on that um uh, yeah, you, I, won, I wish you would have texted. Me. I won three hundred and seventy-five thousand on that comeback for the Browns, and it felt really fucking good. You know I just, what? You just made me feel better. I know, I know. You I, made your me loss feel made me it's feel okay. I'll, I'll give you the nickel after the show, cause okay, okay. I feel bad. I'll but I'll I'll I know, I know, the I know. Nickel for my guy to um, win three hundred. Let's move on to another game real quick, Mike. White. Yeah, let's get Jets. deep into this. You're Mike a quarterback White coach. This is something that you studied, that you played. Talk to me about this guy and what's going on in New York. So listen, I am not an overreactor, but what I will say is no matter I, I do understand the Jets played a wounded Bears team with Trevor Simeon at the helm. I do get that. How, How is I, he still playing, by the way, Trevor? I have Simeon. no idea. He's a, he is miserable. Yeah. I thought he was miserable he can at do my Northwestern. Taxes, but I don't want He's, him. Oh, he could do your taxes yeah. 100%. I don't want him doing the Make the no bears. mistake about that. Him. Bottom line is, um, Mike White, there was, uh, and I'll get into it later in the show, I saw the same type, you know, sense of urgency out of a different offense uh, instilled by a backup, which we'll get into. But Mike White had the team rallied around him. You can the just The team see, likes him. Yeah. You they, can they just can. see a lot of guys on the offensive side of the ball were playing at a much higher clip. Yes. A lot of guys yes. making plays um, when needed. And most importantly, Mike White did what you should do, did- especially in a rainstorm did you not turn the ball real quick, over did you notice how if he got knocked down how players wanted to go help him up of did course. you notice that when he threw a touchdown guys that didn't catch the touchdown were running over to celebrate you did not see that before no the, the team wanted mike white i think from an organizational standpoint they struggled to make a change from zach wilson um and I get it. He they, they drafted him, you know, with a really high pick. But you know what? I, something tells me that he's just a real negative motherfucker. And uh, he's real punkish. Um, I think they should just cut him and get rid of him. He's real punkish. But here's I, the that's, deal. I though. know it's a controversial. Let me ask statement, you. Let me ask you this question. How I feel. Because a lot of people may not even know this. So let me Let's ask you it. this question. Let's hear it. You got a guy like Zach Wilson, goes number two in the draft. Got it. Dominant player at BYU. I mean, unbelievable. Quarterback at BYU. Crushed people. Quarterback. Yeah. So should be a leader, right? Yeah. Well, quarterbacks are leaders, right? Now, let me ask you this. Talk to me. As this owner, let's say you are the owner of the New York Jets. And you're drafting And you are someone. drafting and yeah. you're looking for a franchise QB. Yes. Are you going to grab a QB who dominated BYU, uh, was in the Heisman All race? All American kid. Well, everything I've said. Who didn't get voted team captain by his teammates. Sketchy. I mean, that's a pretty sketchy fucking thing. If you are the quarterback of a team that's striving while you're there, I'm going to give you the most social dominant side. player. You, he gave you the analytical side. I'm going to give you the social side. If your best friend and your ex girlfriend that you cheated on start dating after you guys break up, it's probably because they both hated you, but you were the star. 
So I mean that with respect and love. But you I think they were both you, riding the coattails. I think they were both like, oh, like he's the star quarterback. I'm the beautiful girl. Like it made sense. But secretly they were both like, he is a narcissist. He's fucking the devil. Like, I don't think they ever liked him. So all I'm going to say is, is I don't like Zach Wilson's attitude. I don't like the way he smiles. I don't like the way he looks. I hope he gets the fuck out of New York. He belongs on another team. Maybe I'll like him then. Maybe if he goes to an organization and he opens up his, his eyes and he gets a little more humble and he comes together, I might like him. But until then, if your friend starts fucking your ex-girlfriend because you cheated on her and they're happily ever after... You shouldn't have got drafted high, okay? Um, that's just my social side. Oh, that was, that okay. was what you got out of We're, it. That's my take, okay? I know it's, sex means a lot, all right? So, all right. Philly defense <laughs> looks beatable. I agree. Um, when Philly faces a team that stops the run, I'm interested to see how the game goes. I, I think they're great. I'm just saying I want to see. So, I, here's the deal. I want to see it. The Philly D uh, does look suspect at times. Yeah. They did just lose uh, probably on pace to be a Pro Bowl safety in Chauncey Gardner-Johnson. Big loss. Uh, huge loss. I'm probably He's the biggest loss of the defensive. Biggest defensive loss of the year thus far. Yeah, that's a huge, huge loss. However, you made up a great point. It's not really about the D. It's who's on the other side of the ball against that offense mm -hmm. who's going to stop the run. Yes. And all I can say is the Packers, who are not that good of a team, yes. they do have Kenny Clark in the middle. They have a phenomenal front seven. Yes. Their defensive line is not the reason they lose games. Well, I got news and for you. And they got pushed back the other night. Yeah, they did. Like, they got fucking obliterated. When you're looking at Lane Johnson, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, if you're looking for the best offensive lineman in the league, look no further. His name is Lane Johnson, and by the way, he hasn't given up a fucking sack this season. No shit. He's an animal. That team is really good, and I got news for you. One of the most hated coaches in the league, one of the best. I, you know what? Um, you're not always one gonna... in the best. He's getting downhill, old school fucking run game football. He's killing people. I dude. like that. That I really do like that kind of offense. All I'm gonna say is, is, is if Philly goes and faces a team like San Fran, let's call it. Okay. You're not going to run the ball at four or five yards a clip. It's just not going to happen, which turns the game into you're going to have to open up the, the playbook and you're going to have to throw out of it. I think Hertz can do it. I really do like him. But what happens when they face a team like, let's say, the Cowboys? That means Parsons will be chasing Hertz and he's going to die. Parsons will destroy him. I and not to mention it'll put him in a in an injury risk. So I don't know. I like Philly. I I don't think they're in trouble. Somebody said, "Is it a midseason lull?" Maybe they only lost one game. I mean, God forbid you're in a lull and you only <laughs> lost one game. Uh, next story. Uh, worst beat of the week. I haven't even seen. So this. let me explain this story real quick. Talk to me. This story is rather unique. So let me explain. This there was a gentleman who sent in. Uh, this gentleman is at Nathan.Sharp1 on Instagram. The reason I'm going to tell you oh, this, go show no. him some love. He bet a $100 bet plus oh. 13000 So he put, he risked 100 to win thirteen grand. Correct. And you're, we're about to hear one of the worst bad beats I've ever... I read this and my heart just dropped. So he bet that each team throughout the league that played on the 1 p.m. Eastern time slate, might be 12 for some people, might be 10 for others, he bet that one passing touchdown would be thrown in each game. So long story short, if you watch Which is a this, great bet. I like it. It's a really good bet. I didn't even know they offer this bet. But long story short, um, ball went over the middle to Derrick Henry. He jolts up the middle, uh, often He's never caught in the open field. 21 miles an hour. <laughs> often never caught in the and open field. And some motherfucker dives, Correct. punches the ball out. The ball's recovered by Burks in the end zone, and it's not considered a passing touchdown anymore. 100,000 to win 13,100 oh. collapsed oh. by a strip fumble on Derrick Henry's 22-mile-an-hour way into the end zone, which occurred at the two-yard line. Ball rolls into the end zone, recovered. We wish you the best, Nathan Sharp. Oh. If you got some shit like this, send it in. Uh, um, and give give this guy a fucking break this week Nathan, at work, would you please? I, Nathan, I, I'm doing something for you. Um, I'm going to have my assistant get a hold of you, and I'm sending you uh, the $100 that you lost back. I, I'm sick. 
I'm just straight over that. Uh, <laughs> Giuliano, my buddy Giuliano is actually way behind me. He's he's leveling up uh, guns for me in Call of Duty right now, so excuse him, but uh, I don't want to level up guns, okay? He does it for me. But I'm going to have him send you the 100 at the... Uh, we're going to figure out how to get a hold of you, and I'm going to send you the 100. So. Listen, some next people now as we transition are going to get very excited. Something that a lot of people have been looking for okay. is for us to start talking about some NCAA College football. football. I love it. I think TCU is the most overrated fucking number four team I've ever seen in the fucking <laughs> league. I don't care. I could play in the Big 12, defense in the Big 12. You see this? You see this? I could fucking play defense in the Big 12. I might be a little old now, but when I was in my heyday, I ran a 4-3-9-40. Okay, four th it was 4-4, four, four, I won't lie. I ran a 4-4-40, four, four, and I fucking flew all over the field. These guys, I don't care what they say. They're playing mediocre fucking uh, can't stand it i can't stand it i absolutely sorry. can't stand it hand the fucking ball off once in a while give us something to root for so let's take a look at this first talk game. to it's me it's coming from another conference that i think is absolute pack dog, 12 dog shit oh pack. yeah it's come horrible. on it's i like the horrible. pack i like the pack 12 would you cut it out with those fucking when you're at home and you're laying in bed next to your wife and you're wheeling home washington huskies Minus two, and your kids are sleeping, and you're trying to hit a big old banger. And you're looking at those linemen. They're sponsored by Weight Watchers, those skinny pricks. <laughs> Put some fucking meat on your bones. You can't beat an SCC team so built like that. In that in the Pac-12 championship, it's Utah versus USC, a rematch. Utah beat USC by one because they went for two in overtime. I actually lost money on that game. Who do you think is going to win that game? Who do you got? Not going to bet a team in that game. Really? Uh, I think both teams, uh, again, the reason that I, uh, being serious now, the reason that I really do dislike the the Pac-12 aside from kind of weakish, um, you know, undersized linemen. Okay. Is that uh, the ability to tackle is brutal. And I think that I'm, USC I'm is giving a you my pick. tackling I'm team. I'm giving you my pick. I'm taking the over 65. Okay, good bet. I'm taking USC live wagering when they go down by seven or more because you might be able to feel the game out. I'm going to take them probably plus two or three points and I'm going to swing the line on the sports book and that's going to be my advice for that game. Caleb, Caleb is a stud. They're going to go down at some what? point though. Utah is going to go up in that he's game at some point, right? He's a stud. He's going to take that game over. I truly believe that. I believe it, but I think at some point they're going to be down. You could catch them on plus money or plus points. It's a perfect opportunity to play like um, to flip the game on the sports book. I love that idea. Um, next game, I already said how I feel about TCU, so I'm not going to get into that again, but TCU is minus two and a half. The number four team in the country is minus two and a half. Yep. And can I tell you something? They played already this season. Yep. TCU earlier this season in October yes. overcame an 18 point deficit I, the last time they played I might, and won the game. I might, Sto a stolen game. So that's why the line could be that I low. I actually might take this vendetta one step further. I might take uh, uh, betting on apps is very like you don't feel it. I might take 110,000 and go to the casino and place the bet on Kansas State just so I could feel the energy. When I place the wager, I, I'm not there yet, but I'm thinking about like, maybe I should just to one last fuck you to TCU. I should do that. I, I mean, I don't know how you feel about it, but that's kind of how I feel. Um, okay. Next game, LSU, Georgia. I am so annoyed that this is the matchup. I want to see Alabama play Georgia in the SEC championship. I don't want to see LSU. Why do you want to see Bama though? They're not that good this year. I'd rather watch Nick Saban coach team than Brian Kelly's coach team that just lost his 10-point favorites. I don't want to see that team again. I don't want to – they're going to get slapped by Georgia, and I don't want to watch it. So you think they kill them? I, I think they kill them. Do you see the line on this game? 17. Yes. Yeah. If they're going to murder them. I think it's going to be a disaster. I'm not going to bet the game. I like the under in the game, 53. Okay. I'm not I think LSU is going to have, like – Whatever there is a word more than trouble, okay, that's what they're going to have on offense. I personally won't be betting that game. Um, I I don't like I don't like it. I mean, when you bet minus seventeen and then they're up twenty four and then you get backdoor, like I don't even want to be in that position. So I'm not betting the game. But um, yeah. how about Michigan at the Big House against Purdue? Michigan Purdue. I'm a little. Um, I want to say a little bit of a tribute. Not that he's even going to see it. Um, Aiden O'Connell lost his older brother. Um, I don't know details. I don't know anything. But I was told that he's been with his family here in Chicago somewhere. Um, I'm really sorry that you're going through that type of pain. Um, I, I've it's never rough. experienced it. Very I don't have a sibling, well. but I lost my dad young, and I know that it hurts, and you feel that 
pit in your stomach. I don't know if you're playing or not. I um, Out of respect for you, I'm not even going to comment on this game. You're an incredible quarterback. You're going to the NFL. Um, if you do play, I'm rooting for you, and that's how I feel about it. That's that's classy, and I couldn't agree more. Yeah. Uh, obviously, if he does see this, we wish him the best. Yeah. Um, okay, next up. Oh, are you ready? Oh, this is my this is this is the segment. We're gonna start off slow this week mm-hmm. on what we are gonna now be calling the hater hotline. So, <laughs> we chose two comments that we're gonna bring on to the hater hotline. Uh, the first comment I'm gonna go ahead and touch base on. Uh, this is by at ung or ung ivory. ivory. Man, y'all picks have been ass these past weeks. <laughs> Well, how do you feel now, pal? Because we didn't win. I didn't lose a fucking bet this week, you fucking bum. Let me see your tickets. At least I put myself out there and fucking in the public eye, and I have no scare or shame, and I'm still profitable. Because when I give you these picks, it's on Tuesday, you fucking butts. All right, go ahead. <laughs> I'm done. You, it's your turn. Listen, I got news for you. You could comment anything and everything you possibly want. <laughs> Don't say your picks are ass. You sound like a fucking little baby. I dropped my nuts in your mouth for fun. And I bet you the I guy didn't even person. bet it. Don't fuck with me. Don't fuck with him. We're not listening to your bullshit. I've had enough of this guy. Way too much time on here. Let's go over to the next guy. The next comment. You can't wait to get out of this one. Max, which means you know your mom didn't know what name she was going to give you, and somebody gave her Max. Someone brought a dog in the waiting room Max. over at the hospital. <laughs> 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 Throw that kid a bone. <laughs> Both were the luckiest wins ever. Ravens were up seven with 159 left, and Seahawks were winning by seven with three minutes left. Are you dumb? Seven points in football is one score. If you took your time and you said with five minutes left, they were tied. But you said, ah, for my comment, I'm going to strategically put with three minutes, it was seven. That means that that other team <laughs> with timeouts had four downs to go all the way downfield, no matter what, on first, second, third, fourth, they're going for it, to score and tie it. Shut the fuck up. You guys don't know sports betting. If you're down by seven, it's one possession. It's simple. I'm here for you, but if you're going to talk shit, be prepared to back it up. And if you want to have this conversation in person, I love having conversations in person because I love to talk sports. And if you love to talk sports, I'm going to fucking break it down. And by the end of it, you're going to give me a hug and say, I'm not going to comment about shit no more. I like you. We're done. That's all you're going to say. What do you think? I mean, talk honestly, to me. I couldn't agree more with you, uh, whether it's two minutes in one game or three minutes in the other. Seven points is seven points. Yep. It's one touchdown and an extra point. It's not a big fucking deal. There's a reason that when the game was created, there was this thing called a two minute drill. Yeah, literally. Also, if you're the kind of better that is down seven points in a game with two, three minutes left then you must be just one heartless fucking just absolute My guess loser is, is you're down a ton of money. I am never, ever looking at a television with two minutes to go with a possible potential cover and thinking I'm out of it. I, you know what's crazy is, is I was watching these games, and if you watched those games, um, the Raiders were up one point at 21 to, to 13. Um, the Jags were up at halftime by one point. Like, the games were close all game. You can't just take one instance. It, it, a game... Football's ping pong, and it's going to go back and forth all the time, and you have to understand that there's going to be peaks and valleys in these games, and, and that's how I feel. Um, but you know what? That's the hater hotline. Two people liked Max's comment. Fuck you, too. We're going to get way more spicy, yeah. too, with the comments. Um, but uh, Okay, so week 13, prime time games. I was told if I don't have an actual pick, give a, a lean. <laughs> um, okay, so Bills are minus four and a half at the Patriots. Anthony, I don't even think I need to ask who you're going to take in this game. Talk to me. Who are you taking? So I'm going to give you a statistic. Okay. <laughs> and the last five out of the six times that these two teams played, yes. believe it or not, the over has come in. W- wasn't, wasn't some of them in weather too? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yes. And the last time I believe the over didn't come in, I think it was like zero degrees. Do you remember that yes, game where the I ball, do. the wind was so bad, the ball They didn't... couldn't even kick 30-yard field goals. Exactly. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I am going to lean on the Patriots. Look at me. Look at me. I am not going to bet them this week. I'm going to lean towards the Bills, but 
This is a game I probably don't love. I'm pro- I, if you if you ask me, I'd probably lean on the over, um, which is a weird pick. I agree. But I don't know. That's that'd be my place. Um, this is a game. The next game I'm really excited about. It's Dolphins versus Niners. Um, it, the current line is actually Niners minus four against the Dolphins. This is another game where I'm like, wow. If you want to bet the under, I could see the under. If you want to bet the over, I could see the over. If you wanted to bet. The, the line, I could see it going any way. Uh, I don't know. What do you think, buddy? I think it's two mediocre quarterbacks, in my professional opinion, even though I think Tua is now putting himself into a more of an elite position now as he's, to before, right? I mean, let's be honest. Tua is turning into a quarterback you don't want to face all of a sudden. He's becoming but, extremely efficient. His QBR is unbelievable. Who would you rather face, Tua or Garoppolo? I would rather face Garoppolo. Okay, so th- that gives you an idea on how uh, I feel. Right? But I, I don't know... At, so here's the thing. I feel like the 49ers are so much more dangerous at home. Uh-huh. Um, and I also feel like this is one of those games where McCaffrey is going to have... The Niners are going to have to have bulk control in this game. Exactly. and That's and, exactly and, my point. And my only fear with somebody betting me over in this game is, is I think the Niners know how explosive the Dolphins' offense is. And the best way to stop or slow down an offensive offense... Juggernaut, uh, literally They're a juggernaut with Miami monster athletes offense. all over, is to go slow. And the Niners know how to play slow. They do, they, and that's why I think they have a shot in this game. But yeah. what is going to be huge in this game, and maybe for the remainder of the season uh-huh. for the 49ers, is how healthy and quickly they can get Elijah Mitchell back. I know, and this is a game in which they would have really needed him as a two-headed monster with McCaffrey. What's kind of funny is a guy that they shipped off. Isn't Jeff Wilson on the Dolphins? That yes, he is. I just love stories about guys going back to where they were like kind of like abandoned. <laughs> like Raheem Mostert a couple I years ago. I love it. I just love the idea of this team didn't want me and you did. So I'm gonna run I'm gonna run an extra four miles an hour faster and I'm gonna hit an extra twenty five thousand pounds heavier because I feel cheated on. So I'm <laughs> hoping the Dolphins win. I'm not betting this game. This is another live wager game for me because um I think both teams at some point are going to have the lead, and if you like one or the other, you're going to get value there. So take that as some knowledge for the game. Um, The next game, Chiefs minus 2.5 against the Bengals. Um, I'm leaning Bengals in this game. Um, I I just don't think the Chiefs are as dominant as people are saying. Yep. Um, I like the Bengals. I think their defense has come around. I think they're going to have Joe Mixon and Chase back next week as well, um, which is going to open things up for like T. Higgins and some other guys that play. Yes, and and T. Higgins is turning the corner at the right time. I don't know if you've seen his last game. Uh, he's been able to play unbelievable while um, uh, Chase has been out. But bottom line is, since he, believe it or not, 4-1 and one okay. in the last five games against the Chiefs. That's wild. It's going to be a vendetta-type game. If you remember closely, the last time that these two played, AFC title game, mm-hmm. Joe Burrow got the best of Patty Mahomes, extremely high-scoring game. Um, bottom line is this. I look uh, at this game as a true gambler, and I say, wow, I think a lot of people are going to be on the Chiefs Yeah, less than a field goal. Yeah, I agree. Um, that's how I feel. Um, when- so I am leaning on the last three games. We've, I have not picked a game yet. I know. Um, the games they put on this paper for us, these are like the toughest games ever to bet. These are tough. I don't have a lean anyway, but I love to... These are games I love to live wager because... But I had to add a game to the slate. What is it? And I want to hear your opinion. I didn't even know and this it was coming. Be a sin, yet you don't. Let's no. hear it. He doesn't know. Because this would be a sin if we didn't touch on it. Let's hear it. Uh, it's going to be the I Green Bay Packers. I can't read Bay your Packers. chicken scratch either. It's going to be the Green Bay Packers. Okay. At the Soldier. Okay. Okay. Now keep in mind, this is this is hard for me to say as a as a diehard bear. Go ahead. Green Bay eleven and four against the spread. Brother, I don't not, like this not game. Not beating the not beating the Bears. Is Justin Fields against playing? Against the spread. Is Fields Probably playing? Probably not. If Fields isn't playing, I'm taking the Packers because we lost our safety, Eddie Jackson, and that's a huge loss. And do you feel that Jordan Love was completely ignited, which is the other key oh, that God. I was talking about in this I, game? I would almost, Did he ignite the team, or am I looking at something I would different? almost rather face Rodgers than Jordan Love. Uh, I mean, who wouldn't want to play Rodgers with a broken thumb and a bruised rib cage yeah. over Jordan Love, who came into the game, lost by seven the other night in he, Philly? He looked good. He, he looked, looked good. He looked 
crisp. He looked good. And by the way, the receivers, Christian Watson, all those guys, Cobb, they all came alive. I agree. Um, Okay, so we're going to talk about Marco and Uncle Tone list off a few bets they're actually taking and loving this week. What is a couple bets that you love? So I'm going to go ahead and give you my sharp cheddar Thursday. How about that? Oh, we're going to, I'm going to give you the sharp Thursday. This is a Thursday night parlay? Yeah. Do it. The, let's hear it. And then I'll give you one. At, we'll do it at the end. Cousin what, who go. We like. Cousin I'm going to give you a sharp Thursday. I'm taking Ramondre Stevenson tomorrow guy. night. Got it. Or I'm sorry, Thursday night, Thursday night to score a touchdown in that game. Got it. Uh, love him on the one yard line. He's a hard nosed runner. I'm taking Diggs to get 50 yards in that game. Doable. If I know Bill, he's going to try to lock up Diggs as much as he possibly can, which is going to lead me to my next pick. I'm taking Gabe Davis to get more than 25 yards. In one that pass game. for that guy. That's one long pass. He's a big time deep threat. Love Gabe Davis. And last but not least, I'm going to take an alternate over 33 and a hooker. And that pays plus two honeys. That's a plus two honey. And honestly, very feasible. I'm going to get a lot of pieces of dirt in my DM saying, oh, you took four teams for plus 200. Winning is winning. winning. Yeah, I don't, that doesn't make a difference to me. Thank you, cousin. I like the parlay. Only one I'm a little eh about is that Ramondre Stevenson, but I know that he does get the ball a lot goal line, so I can definitely see that happening. Um, Beautiful. I like it. So, I actually like it. Two, I like it. Why don't you give me okay a game you really like this week, okay, and then go ahead and... Uh, give us your best, best bet. Because, by the way, if you've been looking at our best bets at the end of every show. They're hitting. Yeah, you're hitting. They're hitting a lot. They're, they're winning. Yeah. Um, I uh, am going to go ahead and I'm going to take uh, my favorite bet of the week is. Uh, <laughs> I talked a lot of shit about this team, but I'm going to take Minnesota minus three. Um, Say it again. Minnesota minus three is probably, is probably my favorite pick of the week. They're playing the Jets. They're only a three-point favorite at home. You hear that, Edgar? He's getting closer and closer the, to the Vikings. The, the public is going to love the Jets at plus money. I just, me, I, I would take the, the, the Vikings at the money line, but I think the, the safer bet for people that are risking, you know, money is the minus three. I get it. Um, so my bet will be Vikings money line against the Jets. If you were going to ask me, Marco, I want you to pick out a game that is just super awkward and makes no fucking sense. And I want you to like, it's a big money line dog. My, my money line game of the week, and I'm not sure if I'm going to bet it yet, but I'm kind of leaning like I'm going to, is going to be the Broncos plus eight and a half. It actually just went to nine. I would take them plus nine and on the ML. Um, I bet you that's about 340 on the ML. I know that's crazy, and they're struggling to score, but the Broncos defense can stop the run. And with that being said, I expect this game to be close. And nine's a lot of points when I think a game is going to be close. So that's my second favorite bet of the week. And after, as I actually ha as I talk it out to you, I'll tell I'm going to bet it. I'm yeah. taking Broncos plus nine, and I'm going to sprinkle a little bit on the money line. It's it's a psychopath play, and I'm not recommending it for people, but I like it. So, so you're I'm telling take me it. that line is now up to nine. It's up to nine. Well, I'll tell you what. Yeah, it's at nine because where where is this ball game? It is in Baltimore. It's in Baltimore. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There it is. Yeah. I'm taking nine. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. What are you doing? I'm going to give you my prosciutto pounder of the week. Prosciutto pound. And I'm going to give you a prosciutto fucking pound. Let's and hear I'm going to tell you something. Because we win and lose and live and die together. Oh, I'm going to throw that fucking game in here. And I didn't have that game thrown oh. in, but I'm going to throw that game in. So I'm going to give you a two team parlay for my prosciutto pounder of the week. Let's hear it. It's going to be the under 49 and a half on the alternate. So that's going to be an alternate 49 and a half okay, Indy okay, at Cowboys. Okay. 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 And then it's going to be the under and that exact game you I said. I can see that happening, so I like that at play. At 41 and a half. So that's a 49 and a half, 41 and a half, yep. and the Baltimore-Denver Indy Cowboy. Parlay those together and have yourselves a fucking day. And I was told that I need to give you guys a 100 to 1 parlay because the people want it. Yeah, you So will. Uncle Marco is going to put together 
a hundred to one parlay for you to take this weekend. And I'm actually almost ready. I'm one pick away. I'm actually above a hundred to one. I'm going to have to buy some points in some places. I think cause do you have the under in that Cowboys indie game? Uh, I don't, I would take a look at that. Yeah. Yeah. The under in that game. I really honestly, uh, wow, 43 and a half. I, I would buy up a couple as you can. That's so low. But here's the deal, though. Let's hear it. I want you to imagine right now as you draw this part. Okay, my eyes are closed. I'm imagining. Good. I want you to imagine the Iceman okay. and that double knee brace yeah. running away yeah. Yeah. from Micah Parsons. <laughs> He's going to die. <laughs> Matt Ryan might die this week. <laughs> I don't know. They would just, if, if by chance he evades pressure, he he's going to get Demarcus week. Lawrence coming off the other edge. All right. I, I don't see them moving I, down the field. I literally just built a 100 to 1 parlay in the last 60 seconds. These are literally games that I've just talked about liking. Uh, I'm going to give it to you long and hard. Uh, here we go. Give it long and hard. We're going to do the Titans plus five against the Eagles. We're going to do the Bengals plus three against the Chiefs. We're going to do the Raiders plus three against the Chargers. We're going to do the Vikings minus three against the Jets. We're going to do the Browns minus seven against the Houston Texans. Deshaun Watson's back. I like him. He's I, I hope he dominates. The final game is the psychopath play of the week, which I know you guys are not going to bet it, but this is what makes it 100 to 1, is the Denver Broncos plus 360 in the parlay. It pays 105 to 1. If this hits, y'all got to fucking do a little strip tease for Dunkle Tone and I. I want to see you naked. <laughs> Uh, let's let's go. It's the 100 to 1 parlay. That's what we got for you this week. Uh, I gave you my best bets. I gave you my 100 to 1 parlay. I love you, but I want to go eat dinner and fuck my wife. Good night. <laughs>